good evening. Uh, I can see that most people are still discussing outside. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Pavel Stankiewicz and Mar Marta Skotnicka who invited me here. I usually don't really uh, speak in these contexts and I will speak as an artist and try to uh, bring some context to how I practice. And my emphasis is really on practice rather than production. It is much more complicated to speak about how we practice what we practice as artists. It is much easier to think of artists as uh, people who produce artworks. But I am, um, in fact, I would say quite entitled to talk about property because all my practice and all my um, professional life uh, as an artist has been based in using property of others. And that mainly comes from, I would say, um, a sense of saturation uh, with what already exists in the world. And early on in my practice, which dates, I suppose, to mid-80s, when I moved from Poland to live in London, uh, I decided that there was already enough things in the world um, and there was already enough artworks and I didn't really feel that the world is crying for another original work of art. So I have been trying to think, am I going the wrong way? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been trying to think how to intervene um, into an existing set of relations that regulate um, what art is. And part of that um, is my interest in property. And that is truly because I have used um, collections, I've worked with archives, I've worked uh, with institutions that collect art, I've built um, archives myself, so I've always relied on something that already existed in the world. But the world is, of course, um, divided into um, people who own and own privately and the rest of us who are the public. Um, it's, I really want to uh, illuminate certain things. Sorry, am I... Has it gone too far? Okay. It doesn't seem to quite work, but okay. no, it's going the wrong way. Okay. I I think I want to um, talk about the context for uh, what I do as an artist, and of course that immediate context is the art world. And the art world, as I think Edwin Bendick already explained to us um, beautifully, uh, putting economy as this um, primary site, uh, an economy of uh, symbolic goods is something that is in fact um, quite complicated and doesn't uh, obey the same rules as any other economy. And the, the question for me is really how what is privately owned can be publicly shared. And I give you some examples which are not really examples of artworks, but examples of how in our social life we, um, how do we share or how do we learn to share? And this uh, familiar sight of um, what ownership, if you like, is um, starts really in the playground. But then the playground gets bigger and the players in that playground get bigger. Uh, corporations build substantial um, or, or add to our uh, urban context in a very substantial way, um, which also excludes us uh, as a result. Sorry, this, what? Oh, am I holding it upside down? Okay, sorry, well that, that was. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is the... And uh, one question about what is private, what is public, uh, has been brought to our attention in uh, movements like Occupy. Uh, this is a, an interesting initiative which looked at how uh, what was, in fact, um, a private space, the Zuccotti Park, was um, publicly owned by a movement. Uh, there are numerous examples in our daily life of an encouragement and an awareness of how to share um, and what to share in terms of spatial politics, and the street is one of those examples. Another of those examples is a library. Um, I have recently published a book which is a result of thinking about property uh, together with a, a New York-based curator called Laurel Patak. And the book is called Undoing Property, and it has a question mark in the title. It's actually quite difficult to articulate that question mark when you speak. And the book itself is produced as um, an object which unmistakably kind of belongs to a public library. So when you maybe find it um, in a bookshop, but you can also download it, uh, you will see that as an object, it articulates a space which is a space of sharing. So in the library, you don't need to own that book. You simply uh, need to read it. But coming back to the art world, um, I've tried to visualize what, um, what is our experience of the art world, which is visits to galleries, museums, um, some people have already their own collections, is in fact connected to a, a much bigger space, and that space in fact in an, exists in an immaterial way, which is um, this diagram which I made uh, together with a programmer. It charts uh, connections on Twitter between uh, institutions that really regulate uh, what I think one could call a reputational economy of art. So places like Museum of Modern Art or Whitechapel Gallery or Museum of Contemporary Art in Warsaw, these are all players that could not really exist simply in um, the analog space, but also exist because we all participate in the exchanges that they provide. And the art world has also, it really is based still on a very, very conservative model, and it's a model of scarcity. And as long as it exists, in, in that, inside that model and doesn't challenge it, uh, the market is very much um, present in all kinds of exchanges that um, artists have with their public. But this is how the market um, looks. Now the alternative to that is um, spaces like this and rooms like this. So I wouldn't want to be um, really in conversation with this man or in conversation with this man. I try to make work that directly intervene into a museum space. So one of my projects for a museum in Sweden, Moderna Muset, simply um, articulated what was their logo. And their logo um, was, um, it's a handwriting by Robert Rauschenberg, which then through um, a number of operations inside the museum was turned what was a, a private piece of writing, um, simply an artist writing the name of the museum, was turned into a logo. And I simply articulated that by um, adding the copyright sign. Um, I'll go very quickly as I can see my time is coming, at, uh, coming to an end how um, I believe in a distributive practice. So whether it's an artist like David Hammonds that is simply distributing uh, snowballs and uh, you can't really copyright those, or it's an artist like David Horvitz um, who um, is making photographs and putting them on wiki 
Uh, this is a project worth looking up called Public Access, or one of my projects called the Women's Audio Archive, where I turned what was private recordings into uh, a public collection. But this is really what I think needs to be done, that we really need to uh, shift some goddamn paradigms. Thank you.